Hey guys, Cam with Hope to Canaan Foundation. Bear with me here, I'm gonna log in to the question for today. It's a lengthy one, a lot of details were provided, which is great, um, about uh, socialization and some dog park etiquette and dynamics that someone who is struggling with. So let me just go ahead and pull this up and then we'll kind of dive in. Um, quick things to note, um, sorry, I poked myself in the eye right before I launched this live stream and it has been a crazy day because our new intern started today. Yay for Addie. We're super happy to have her. Um, and it's just Friday, you know, it's just being a Friday. So bear with me. <laughs> um, hey Susan, good to see you on Karen. Hey Hannah. Um, we're, we're, you know, coming to the end of a, a nutty, nutty week. And uh, I, what I wanted to start out with was saying thank you so much again to everyone who participated in our auction. Um, if you donated, if you bid, if you won, if you didn't, um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being a part of that process for us. I don't have the total uh, final offhand right now. I should have been prepared with that, but I believe it's somewhere in the ballpark of a couple thousand dollars that were raised, which is just, uh, was raised. Um, which is just absolutely awesome and so, so very much appreciated. We have one dog in the adoption program right now benefiting from your fundraising contributions and a possible another um, in, intake uh, coming down the pipeline. And, um, and then we're also currently still providing long-term boarding, a second round actually for Onyx, whose owner is deployed. And Onyx is gonna be moving out of country because our deployed service member, uh, Anthony, was redeployed right after he came home and he said, you know, I really can't be without my dog for another 18 months. So your contributions are allowing us to provide those services to pay for veterinary care for our adoptable dogs, to put them in the training programs that will help them be successful long term, to buy food and all of those things. Um, and we can't do it without you. So thanks a million times over for everybody contributing and being involved in that that did. I know it wasn't an easy system to do super quick. Uh, you kind of had to sit with it a little bit and come back to it and, you know, get yourself registered and so forth. Um, so I, I appreciate that. All right. So, hey, April, thank you for being here. Um, so we have a question that came in that has to do with socialization, some dog park scenarios. I'll share with you. Uh, a skimming of what is asked, and then we'll chat a bit about it. So hopefully this will be helpful for the, some of you that are following the broadcast. Maybe you're, you know, you, you do or don't take your dog to a dog park, but having some insight into appropriate socialization and how to navigate these interactions that you might share between your dog and other dogs, whether it's family members' dogs, friends' dogs, um, doesn't have to be in public places, right? The, these are common struggles and situations that people end up feeling a little insecure about whether or not they handled it correctly or how to you know cut it off at the pass uh, potential behavior issues that they they don't want to be creating in their dog or puppy via inappropriate socialization so um what is being asked here is about a boston terrier okay she's 10 months yeah stephanie you for sure huh um 10 months old, uh, 26 pounds, Boston Terrier, loves to play with most dogs, even friendly large dogs. So we have a confident dog here for the most part. Best friends are a rough collie and an Australian Shepherd. Um, she plays well with random large and medium dogs at the dog park. She can be overwhelming to small dogs. There was a little dog that was very scared and cowering between its owner's feet. Um, and so this particular owner held their Boston Terrier in a down position by the collar in the presence of that little dog when they came over to sniff. Um, but when her Boston leapt to play, the, the other little dog got scared and the owner um, continued on their way. This was near a water you know, stream apparently where a lot of dog owners come and have their dogs play in the water off leash. And uh, both of these, um, not both of these dogs were off leash, but the Boston was. So we clearly have an owner who came into the situation with a nervous, insecure, small dog to begin with, but then keeping it on leash is an indication of some important information we'll come back to, okay? Um, so our, our um, you know, uh, viewer is asking, what's the right thing to do in such an interaction? How can my dog learn not to play so rough with little dogs? What should the owner of the little dog do to prevent their dog from getting more and more scared? 
Well, number one, that's not the right place for a nervous, insecure, fearful little dog. Um, it would be much better for that little dog to be socializing with uh, one or two dogs at a time that are strategically selected to, yes, stress and put pressure uh, unavoidably, but also, um, you know, that that dog could build its confidence strategically with a, with a smaller group in a consistent fashion, meaning multiple times over, before you add or change something, okay? Um, this is one of the biggest challenges of a dog park situation is that it is inconsistent. You have certain things that are predictable and reliable often that dogs are being, you know, let out to play after being cooped up certain times of day where that's particularly risky and problematic. Um, there's a lot higher incidence of, you know, unmanaged excitement and arousal where the dogs do not have accountability to be calm and neutral and just tolerant and coexist. They're thinking that they need to be running and playing and in high drive and overstimulated all the time. And so that can lead to a lot of issues and a dog park naturally promotes that type of dynamic and you can't control it entirely, especially if it's a large open space like on a, on a waterway, like we have Fiesta Island here, um, places like that can be a blessing and a curse because space for dogs to move away from each other um, and to not feel too condensed and, and thereby, you know, have more conflict but it also can be too open, amping the energy and, and ramping dogs into an inappropriate, overexcited level of play. So number one, what you can do is have an off-leash trained dog. If your dog is not reliable off-leash to where you can temper her enthusiasm, her you know pushiness or putting pressure on other dogs, and if you can't affect your dog without the leash on and bring her energy down, then to me, that's not an off-leash trained dog. An off-leash trained dog is a dog that either with voice commands uh, by itself or reinforcement of remote collar if necessary can be managed, can be told easy, right? Can be told to bring the energy down, slow down, recall off of something that it's interested in that you can clearly tell it's overwhelming. Um, that would be an off-leash reliable dog and a dog that would be okay and um, you know appropriate and respectful to put in that situation around other dogs that have more or less confidence comparatively. Um, and so number one, your, your only thing you control to our, our, ask, our asker here, the only thing you control is yourself and your own dog, right? And the actions that you take to ensure that you have complete control and connection with your dog. If your dog practices rough play and doesn't get corrected for it, you're actually building a bad habit that you're trying to avoid, okay? So to your point of how can my dog learn not to play so rough with smaller dogs, you need to have a way to coach that. You need to have a way to temper that energy, either keeping the leash or long line on or having an off-leash trained dog, okay? And being able to add pressure strategically, leash or remote, um, that says, hey, bring it down a notch, give space, that dog is you know, feeling too much pressure from you, come back over here and do something different. The owner of the little dog, preventing that dog from getting more and more scared, shouldn't have that dog in that situation, once again, because it can't manage, it cannot control and ensure that that dog has positive association experiences being around dogs when it's clearly just fundamentally nervous and insecure and uncomfortable. So keep that in mind that, you know, if that person is willing to recognize the context clues that their dog is giving them and take action to be an advocate, the dog park in that, in that dynamic you're describing is not appropriate for them to bring their dog, especially if they feel that they need to keep it on leash because, um, you know, it bolts and it doesn't have the ability to communicate with other dogs effectively about, you know, its comfort level and what it wants or what it's okay with and what it's not okay with. That would be better served taking that dog over to a friend's house, interacting with one or two dogs strategically chosen to allow them to sort it out, right? Let that dog learn, let that dog be overwhelmed and stress and learn to recover. Um, hopefully it's a young dog and they have, you know, malleability right now that they could up the ante and commitment level to navigating and really get that dog, you know, into some situations where it's less dogs, less stimulus, less energy and crazy, but still a stress and a challenge that that dog needs to work through. Um, so then we say around the same week, the exact opposite situation happened where our Boston Terrier um, was approached by a medium-sized 40-pound dog, um, 
went right up to the Boston, barked and growled. So Boston scampered under the chair to hide, um, but the larger dog was relentless and kept it up. In the middle of this, the dog would occasionally lick at, at the Boston's face. I'm not sure why. Was he trying to play? After a while, the owner came and called him off. Um, eventually, that dog went away to play with another dog. The play was super rough, and I noticed that the dog did not take turns being under and constantly had the other dog by the throat. It looked really rough. I think the two of them were enjoying it nevertheless because the underdog looked happy and kept coming back for more play. I held my Boston on my lap because she wanted to be picked up, but I didn't leave the park. Instead, we observed the other two dogs playing roughly. Um, after a few minutes, I put my dog down, the Boston. The brown dog came about five feet from us for a second or two and then proceeded to ignore the Boston the rest of the time. Um, Boston Terrier went around pretty much avoiding the other dog, but not cowering. So they'd sort of come to an understanding, right? Did either of the owners do the right thing? I don't think leaving right after an incident would have helped my dog. I agree with you. Some would say I shouldn't have picked her up at all. Also agree with you. Um, did this experience help her confidence or hurt it? Uh, I think a lot of dog owners struggle with giving their dogs good experiences socially, avoiding bad ones. We don't have extensive network of stable dogs to associate with, especially if it's between dogs that are essentially good but have different play styles. Meeting doesn't have to be traumatic, right? How does one help uh, the dog move through experiences of other dogs not playing nice and coming out on the other end more confident? Um, so, and then I have some background here that's provided around the temperament test, all threes and fours, for those of you that are familiar with um, the Bullhard temperament test. Um, pounced on the umbrella and the towel, bit them, scored one on both those tests, consequently the loves fetch and tug. She is crate trained, sits at entry and arrivals, and looks me in the eye for direction a lot. She does not do place command or come when called yet. Um, okay, great background, by the way. I really appreciate you putting so much effort, um, Ichiko, into your inquiry and giving me such thorough detail. It's really helpful. Um, hopefully, our viewers are um, finding the benefit of that detail as well. So, you know, there's a lot going on here. Number one, um, there, there are certain things that are outside the realm of your control, ensuring, you know, what emotional experience your dog has, for example, in these, in these interactions is one of them. Um, you do the best you can, just like parenting, right? You do the best you can with the knowledge and tools you have at the time. Having a temperament assessment, having emotional objectivity about your dog's personality and disposition is really smart and really valuable. You have a confident dog, you have a dog that probably needs to be checked and corrected by a more dominant, confident, you know, uh, aloof dogs, independent dogs, dogs that don't want to play with her. Um, with the information of the temperament that you provided and some of the examples of play, I think that the um, dog, you know, this, this larger brown dog that was sort of obnoxious and in her face and a little overwhelming to your dog was actually really valuable. And thankfully, hey Gina, thankfully, um, you know, it didn't take it to an inappropriate level in terms of, you know, correcting your dog or pursuing your dog beyond what, what um, happened. But I actually think that experience was really, really good for your dog. And I agree with your comment that some people would say the dog shouldn't have been picked up. I would not have picked your dog up. I would have encouraged your dog to just be, um, you know, processing and in, ex in existence in that space after the fact, whether she wanted to move away from everybody and sit off to the side, perfectly fine. She should be allowed to do that. Um, or if she wanted to try to go back and navigate and figure out how to potentially get involved again, that would have been okay as well. Because in most cases, your dog is the more confident dog. Your dog is relatively neutral and balanced in her social experiences and her feelings about being social. And that's pretty typical of the breed as well. Boston Terriers, they're tenacious. They tend to have strong, you know, confident personalities. They can be pushy. Um, socially similar, you know, the French Bulldog, the, you know, English Bulldog, the Boxer, a lot of these bully breed dogs that are all interconnected back there in their genetics, they often need in their puppydom to have some clear, you know, and, and 
you know, meaningful corrections from other dogs that don't want anything to do with them so that they learn that it's not all about them and that they need to have sensitivity um, to other dogs that, you know, don't want to play as rough or don't want to engage at all. It's really important, in my opinion, for puppies to learn that not all dogs want to play with you in general. Um, and so, you know, in this case, the only thing I would change is I wouldn't have picked the dog up, but I agree that staying was really beneficial so that your dog could decompress and process and get over any of her initial sort of discomfort and insecurity and those feelings of concern that, um, you know, she, she needed to, uh, leave the situation, flee and avoid and, and that, you know, she needed to feel fearful of other dogs in any way. In some respects, it's never going to the personality and temperament are always going to be there, right? And so the bigger picture question that you were asking about, you know, these situations and, and how do I avoid having my dog, um, you know, go through things in life that develop social insecurity or, you know, develop bad um, responses to other dogs. When you're starting with solid genetics, when you're starting with a dog that was whelped in a proper way, that's been exposed and socialized in a healthy and, and you know proper way between birth and 16 weeks, you're set, you're essentially set. We, we've seen that you know uh, some of these dogs that are raised correctly in those first four months and then don't socialize with another dog for 10 years can and do drop right back into a you know, clear and easy socialization with just about any dog way down the line, even if they weren't practicing it. So some of this stuff is just established. It's who your dog is. It's how they're going to be or not. Um, and then the other piece of it is practiced and learned and experienced in the bigger, you know, grand scheme of things over time and through their development. Um, and so in your case, you don't need to put any stress or concern on this. You have a social dog. You have a social dog. You have a dog that plays well with other dogs, but can sometimes be too much. And when she has the opportunity to be corrected and put in her place and, you know, educated, if you will, that she's not the top of the pecking order, that she's not able to harass or invite uh, every dog all the time in the same way, that's something that you should get excited about. It's actually really beneficial for your dog to experience that. So, you know, given that you only have this as a resource for giving your dog an outlet maybe to be off leash and running and playing and interacting with other dogs just be observant and pay attention if you have situations where you know a dog like that is being a bully the play is not reciprocal the owner is not removing their dog you might leash your dog and walk away you know keep her from getting in a situation where it could be potentially dangerous but if it plays out similar to how you describe it here you've got maybe a little bit of pushiness some correctiveness you know, or a dog that's saying, hey, queen, you're not the center of the universe here and you need to bugger off and give us some space. That's okay. Let that play out. Let your dog stress and recover. It's an important part of her development. She needs to be able to have that skill over her lifetime. And if she, you know, gets stuck a little bit, the gears of her brain get stuck a little bit and she goes into um, a mode of avoidance or she tries to flee, draw her back towards just a sort of a neutral coexistence and tolerance of that stress but don't fuel it with affection physical touch um, or enable her by removing her completely until she's calm right um you know the the scenario of the dog park just overall to reiterate is very difficult um, it draws a certain type of dog owner oftentimes and it can promote certain challenges and you've got to be conscientious that there are times the dog park is just simply not productive and not a good environment even for a social dog um, you know those situations where it's a high traffic time it's the end of the day people have had their dogs cooped up all day they walk in they turn them loose they're staring at their cell phone they're not paying attention um, if they aren't parenting in those moments and being mindful to correct their dog if they're being pushy and inappropriate or to remove their dog um, if necessary um, then, you know, you need to avoid those individuals. You need to get your dog out of there and advocate for her and have her back so that she's not practicing uh, experiences of trauma there. However, again, the way you describe her, the way she socializes in general, this is a dog who's capable of navigating quite a lot and more likely to be the one that you need to slow down, more likely to be the dog that you need to temper that roughness and over, you know, excitement or pushiness and so forth. 
Um, in my opinion, I don't turn a dog loose in a place like that unless I have them off leash trained. So my two dogs, the only time they've gone to the off leash beach, e-collar trained, okay? Um, and we take those tools with us and we make sure that I can call my dog back from something that I can see might be a problem over there of a dog that's pushy or overly aroused or defensive or, you know, actually aggressive. Um, or I can call my dog off of a dog that I can see that they might be overwhelming and putting too much pressure on because both my dogs are pretty confident socially. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, I hope I didn't miss anything too. The, the, um, you know, other option here and, and best advice I can give is those people that you run into at the park guys that have the dogs that socialize the best with your dog where you're like, that's her best friend at the park. She loves that doodle. Make friends with that human and get together with them outside of the dog park. Invite them to go on a walk together and walk the dog so they're learning that they don't always get to be free and crazy when they see each other, but they can actually be controlled and calm and structured and get um, interaction coexisting around one another that isn't high excitement all the time. Meet up for a walk and then turn the dogs loose in one of your yards or you know in a small field or another park somewhere if you can, especially if you're off-leash connected, off-leash trained. Um, that's a much better way for you to reinforce those healthy relationships and get that socialization in without having the risk of exposure to the dogs that are not contributing in that way, that don't give you a quality uh, social interaction experience. So hopefully um, you can do that. Hopefully you got some nice people that you're meeting up with that when you you know bring your dog to the park, you can build relationships with to spend more quality time. Place. Um, spend more quality time together outside of this environment and avoid those situations where things might be out of balance. All right, guys, that's my only question for today. Uh, feel free, you can always email your questions in advance to april at hope2canine.com. She can drop her email link for you here. Uh, we put Fix It Friday prompts up every so often, and so if you see one of those posted on social media, you can comment your question there. The detail on this was absolutely fantastic and much appreciated. Um, I'm gonna get back to coaching my intern who's starting with us today and working some dogs so we can move on to the next and more fun stuff. But hopefully this is helpful. Drop your comments if you've got expanded questions on this topic or some other things that you might wanna contribute um, to our, uh, our viewer and their ask. Um, sounds like you're doing a great job with your dog though overall and I uh, absolutely appreciate your question coming through. Have a great rest of your Friday everybody, okay? Talk to you soon.